Oh, I'm alive now. Oh, well, that makes sense, doesn't it? That's cool. How do I... I just, like, put it down. Damn it. Damn it. Because I'm charging it, but I don't have, like, anything to weigh this thing down, or... Dude, I, I suck at this. What if... Hang on. What if I do one of these numbers? Hey, we are going to talk some shit, so strap in, kids. <clears throat> Pardon me while I sort of set this whole spiel up. Hey, it worked. Good eye, good eye. How you going? Dude, Kate, thank you so much. I forgot to hit you back. Thank you so much for that, that night footage. Uh, I'm not... I'm probably going to start chopping it up maybe in, like, the next week or so now that, uh... F fucking the store opened up and I can... Because I have the next night game coming up. So I also... When I'm, as I'm editing that footage, I need to sort of, like, make a clear distinction between, like, what I can use for general night game stuff and anything that is, like, mill sim night game, like, specific. But, dude, thank you so freaking much. How many do we got in here? Ten? We can wait for a few more kids to join this conversation where I talk shit about this facade of an airsoft community. Oh, fuck me. Here we go, kids. Tell your friends to jump in here. Hello, everyone. Hello. Hello. <gasps> Alex, is that you? Alex has entered the chat. Dude, any raw footage you want to send me is always appreciated. I can always use more raw night game footage. I know, right? Shit talking. What, it, what community indeed. <sighs> what do we got? We can wait for like 15. We can wait for like a few more kids to show up. Yo, everyone was like, yo, go live now. Because, like, I had a couple guys like, I ain't doing shit. Okay, that sounds like fun. Dude, where were you, Alex? Where were you at for the N1 thing last weekend? That was the most fun I have had in goodness knows how long. That was so killer, bro. Sean was there. I interviewed Sean. What up, Pops? The beef. Dude, that N1 thing was sick. Uh, Sean's interview... Sh oh, you're at a doctor's appointment. That's real. Sean's and Hannah's were probably the best interviews. You're going to love what I did with uh, some of the other kids. I'm, gonna, I'm not going to spoil it too much. What do we got? 14. We can wait for one more in the chat. Then I start just running my mouth. We can wait for a few more kids to get into this quote-unquote community shit show that I'm setting ablaze. Yeah, right, Thomas? That's what I'm saying. Hopefully... Hopefully more stuff will be dropping. Hopefully I can make some more announcements um, of the, kind of about the progression of the company. Next week, we got some paperwork signed up, so we got some cool stuff happening there. So that's killer. Yo, everyone's flooding in now. All right. Clear that out. Thank you, Thomas. Dude, you'll be working there. Dude, it was so... We did like 2,500 bucks on our first day, which was far exceeded my expectations. I didn't think we were going to make a grand. That shit was killer. It was, it was so much fun in that shop today. It was so much, so much fun. Uh, it's, yeah, it was, it was a vibe. It was so cool. Or I just want to do punk rock airsoft shit with my friends. Right? Dude, that store is so cool. Uh, the unfortunate part is that big $9,000 order from Evike that was expected to drop today. Don't know where that thing's at. So hopefully it shows up tomorrow. It's a whole pallet of shit. Um, yeah. So hopefully that shows up. Because that's got like die mask and, you know, some other big stuff in there and stuff like that. Anyway, let's talk shit about, oh lord, let's talk some shit about this quote-unquote airsoft community that is 80% bullshit and fake as fuck and just done for hashtags and algorithms and really only about 20% legitimate. Um, there are also... It's dependent upon, uh, 
Well, also be, keep in mind that we're open on weekends also. So any guys, you, anytime you guys come down to the field, you can also go to the shop. Anyway, uh, this is also, bear, like, so bear in mind, when I talk about the community, um, when I'm talking about like this is the community or whatever, when, I, when I'm using the word community, apparently my standards are fucking far exceeding beyond anyone else's, basically. <clears throat> so I bear that in mind. And that I'm fucking, dude, two dicks deep in the game right now. Uh, um, so there's also that to factor in. Yeah, I know, right? Just start sending them out, mate. Uh, so there. So anytime I am talking about quote unquote community, what I am talking about is my personal belief and definition of of what community is and, ne and may not necessarily be, so what it is and is not, by my personal standards, which is also the same set of standards I use for the company. So the field, the shop, and any other cool future collabs that we do with anyone else in the future. I don't believe you can buy your way into a community. I fucking don't. Now, it's also, I'm speaking specifically, again, this is where we get balls deep. So there's like a field, like a community of players, right? So you jump in my Discord, it's a whole, it is, it's a community. So you can buy your way kind of into like a field community because that's how you play. So the True Aim community is just a bunch of players and kids and they just have fun. And they pay the field fee and they buy shit from me and you know, it is what it is. They just go and they have fun. Uh, but it's, you don't really hear anyone arguing about, like, community standards for a field community. Does that make sense? That, because it's a business. So it, it, it's hard to, it's hard to make the distinction between community and business. At, at the, it's hard to make that distinction. What I'm usually talking about, when I say community, is the competitive community. Speed QB kids, uh, all my tournament kids. So I don't necessarily lump it into just speed QB, CSL, NSL, Australia kids. Like for me, it's all like one, you're a competitor or you're not, or you're in the competitive community or you're not. Like the format you compete in to me is fucking irrelevant. Now, this is where shit gets interesting. Um, it's easy to take a group photo and lump a bunch of fucking community hashtags and fucking for the culture and all this other horse shit people are talking about on Instagram because that's easy. Um, hi, Jess, I'm at the house. Because that's the easy thing to do, right? A community to me is not defined by its successes or by it. It's defined by like its failures and its breakpoints. So... And, and this isn't like necessary. This isn't a local thing. So this isn't me just like, oh, he saw this happening at a fucking field in the Bay Area and he's pissed off or at a field in LA. Bro, I've had conversations with field managers from all over the world about this. East Coast, West Coast, the Midwest, the like Southern field managers. This seems to be a unanimous, unanimous? This seems to be like a widespread issue. If you want to compete and be a part of the local competitive community, what, where, where does that stop? Like, what, what are, what are your left and right limits? Let me give you an example. Let's say you're at Bob's Airsoft Field, and Bob's Airsoft Field has speed nights every Wednesday or Sunday or whatever fields are having speed nights, right? And one of Bob's referees for his speed night uses uh, inappropriate racial slurs towards a player. And I'm not talking about like, low, like, no, bro, I'm talking, let's say, a referee at an airsoft field during a speed night drops the hard R on a kid. Like the hard R. Do you stop going to that field? Now, most kids in the di in my chat right now be like, yeah, I sure you do. Yeah, bro. 
No, you don't. Kids will say one thing, and you'll see all this chatter online or in discords like oh we're gonna boycott this field and he did this they said this horrible thing keep in mind this is also a hypothetical scenario hi justin happy birthday train happy late birthday i love you i was watching your stream in the shop i love you so let's say you have like that that field scenario which is entirely hypothetical by the way none of this has ever happened to my knowledge how many of those players are going to stop going to that field probably most 80 percent of them are usually going to stop going for a weekend and then they're back again. Like you can, these kitties outside, a field can basically do whatever it wants to its players because that field knows no matter what, they don't have to change. Especially if they're the only field of that type in the area. Um, but what I have personally witnessed is that you'll have this take take any field and they do wrong by the community whether it's inappropriate ref to player conduct whether it's um price related like they started jacking up the prices for certain things or whether it's shady business practices right so what do you what do the how does the community respond and this is why i say that for the most part the community is fucking fake because you will never, I don't want to say never, you will rarely see, rarely, players boycotting that field for more than maybe two weekends. So I'll, I'll use a local example. Case in point, that thing that happened with City back in, was it like four months ago, where it was like the iPro thing on a speed night and the ref mouthed off to a guy and said, well, we don't even want you guys here anyway, blah, 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 blah. Uh, and then you see online everywhere, boycott CQB City, boycott CQB City, boycott CQB City, boycott CQB City. Dudes are still going, right? How many dudes are still... That was a thing for a weekend. I remember because all those kids came to my field that weekend, and then by the next weekend, it was back to capacity again. So when you say boycott a field... Do you really mean boycott it for a weekend and then we're just going to fucking forget about this thing ever happened? Now, mind you, in the grand scheme of customer service, that was a very minor thing, right? And I'm not attacking a field. I'm, use, I'm simply using that as an example of when a field does wrong by a community, the community raises hell and then stops giving a shit after a weekend. So it could happen on Saturday and by next Saturday and we're like, Ah, fuck it, we're going there. Because we just want to play. That's the other thing that I, I fucking hate the phrase, bro, I just want to play. Because what you are telling me is you don't give a shit about the behind the scenes. You just want to play. You don't care if the field is operating ethically or lawfully. You just want to play, right? You don't give a shit if that field doesn't pay the appropriate wages to their field staff because you just want to you just want to play right like that's how i take this shit again keep in mind i'm fucking balls deep in the game and this is my personal opinion uh what's another fucking good one dude just any time as a general theme and i've seen this with fields all over dudes will title it uh, you know, this is the fucking worst field ever. And they will have, like, this 10-minute montage of gameplay at the field. And, like, I hate... And, and the audio in the back... Matt, we're talking shit. That's what we're talking about. I love you, Matt. I miss you, Matt. And in the audio background, you'll hear their narration, like, Hey, guys, I went to this field today. I went to Bob's Airsaw Field. I fucking hate this field. The refs suck. It's overpriced. The snacks are overpriced. All these reasons why I don't go back. And guess what? Guess what they're going to do next week? They're going to fucking go back because they have no fucking spine. Right? Because they just want to play. Because what they're not willing to do is stop funding that business. Because they would rather play at a shitty field than not play. And that's why I say that the fucking community is bullshit. Fuck Bob's field, bro. Uh, another, here's more, some more examples that I've seen. So let's say, um, usually like what pisses me off, and this is also a very 
industry specific opinion to have is anytime I see a business doing shady shit, like legitimately unlawful, unethical, shady shit, usually for me, it's like, um, they, they overcharge with a bunch of products and services, but they don't even pay their ref staff minimum wage, which is actually really, really common. It is a, it is an unfortunate thing in the industry is that Bob's airsoft field will have, let's say a $30 field fee for a shit layout. Um, the rentals are another $30 and they're like shitty Lancers that no one's teched in like a year and they don't work that well. So you have that field, right? And the ref staff isn't actually hired. It's just a bunch of random ass teenagers that that business pays less than minimum wage under the table, which I understand like you want to use teenagers and like kind of work with them, but not wanting to adequately compensate them for their time is fucking unethical. So you'll see this like, yo, Bob just fired the, like these, these four refs for whatever reason. Like, this is bullshit. Like, these are the best refs that Field has ever had. Uh, okay, see you guys next Saturday, right? Same fucking time. But that shit happens. That's industry-wide. And every field across the country. You give me any state in the country, I guarantee I could find one of those fields. And it fucking pisses me off. Because you'll see these kids that are at that field that, you know, one weekend, they'll have a picture like, fuck this field, this field, this manager's bullshit, these rules suck. And you'll keep seeing those same posts over and over. And like, hey, dipshit, don't go to that fucking field anymore. What? Why are you complaining, but you continue to fund their business? Like, the manager needs to do this, manager needs to do that. Fuck that. See you next Saturday. What? The manager clearly doesn't need to change what they're doing because you're not changing what you're doing. And this shit pisses me off, bro. Uh, retail, you don't usually see this. This seems to be sort of a uniquely field problem. So, like, I have never personally witnessed... Uh, I mean, I'll, if it happens in shops, it might... I, I feel like it's... Maybe it's just more exaggerated in, in fields. Does that mean... Because retail, it's really... For the most part, it's just like sales transactions. Uh, for the most part, like there's really not a whole lot of community around a specific retail shop, if that makes sense. Like really where you really, in my opinion, truly see this is fields. Like I saw, uh, it, was a, it was a video, it was a YouTube video. I don't remember where this field was. South, I think. It, it was not, it was not in the, I know it was not in the Pacific time zone. It, it wasn't even in my time zone. And it was a, fuck, it was like a $35 or a $40 speed night fee. And the fucking field they were using was bullshit. It was a bullshit layout. It just sucked. It was like pallets and fucking barrels and some tarps. And they were charging, I knew it was, they were definitely charging more than 30, but they were charging all this money and giving the shittiest experience you could possibly imagine. You could not get away with it. The one thing I will say about California, you can't do that shit in California. Oh, bro, I'm sure so many, you could name so many shops you've been in the game. You're such an OG, bro. Uh, one of the only retail shops that built... Yeah, Airsoft Master. Uh, Gateway seems to have a really good community built around it. But it, it's it's Airsoft Gateway, Paintball Gateway. So they're, I mean, arguably they're kind of a big company. So they kind of know what the fuck they're doing. But even like some shops get shady because you'll, you can, you can almost tell who the shop, who the manager doesn't, doesn't give a shit about. Molly! Um, you can almost tell from, from a retail standpoint, you can almost tell who does and doesn't give a shit about certain players by what they sell and what they don't sell. So if a shop doesn't sell like high cap of parts, they don't give a fuck about that customer demographic. So you can find shops that don't give a shit about the speed soft demographic. 
because they don't sell mat they don't they will not sell full face masks they will not sell any like any legit high kappa parts or they sell bullshit high kappa parts or they sell like or they won't sell t uh marui high kappas they'll sell like only the jag like only the we tech like only the lower tier high kappas because they fucking hate those speed qb pieces of shit it's fucking ridiculous but people keep going to the and sometimes you can you'll even get a manager that says, "Dude, I fucking hate that style of play." Like, "Oh, cool. So I'm going to keep giving you my money though cuz I care about the community, right?" The fuck out of here. I'm not even drinking. Bro, this is a zero sugar Pepsi and I'm this fired up. <laughs> ah! The shit fucking bothers me because I'll see I'll have kids send me videos and stories and like disc I'll, i'm jumping in these discords where there's so much bad shit happening centered around a field but those kids are like oh you know we stand by uh this team or this team or we stand by this you know we're we are for the community yeah bro we're not gonna go back to that field ever again bullshit bullshit your betcha ass is gonna go back to that field next saturday because you don't have the balls to not go because you just want to play, right? It's fucking wild. But then again, that's such a... Like, on a consumer level, that's such a niche thing to concern yourself with. So, for me, that's like not wanting to buy, uh, for example, Nike or, say, Apple products. Because you don't like the association those companies have with, like, child labor laws overseas... So you specifically don't buy those products. That's the level of consumer buying or of, of consumer behavior that you're really dealing with. But again, since I'm fucking three dicks deep in the airsoft industry, that's how my brain works. I don't go to fucking fields that I don't think are as into the community as I am. Just fucking saying, bro. Uh, there's really not a lot of tournament formats that are like this. Usually players are pretty quick to see that. Uh, a lot of guys accuse uh, Airsoft Pro League. Remember APL back in the day? A lot of guys were accusing them of kind of that same thing. I don't know if I necessarily agree with that because everything I saw was APL was wanting to do some legitimate, really cool stuff. Uh, I just don't think, I think it was just mismanaged. So, like, I don't... A lot of dudes thought it was just a scam to get money. No, <laughs> no. APL was not a scam to get money to abuse players out of money. APL was just, like, this legit high production value thing, and I think it just got mismanaged, and because of that, uh, the internet sort of made up... sort of filled in the blanks on its own and said, APL was a scam. I think it was just mismanaged. Because they were putting legitimate money into that thing. You're not investing like $20,000 into an airsoft scam, typically. That's not how this industry... All hysteria... Oh my, I have... All hail the great airsoft history... The king troll. He's in the chat, kids. Finally, someone that I can talk shit with. Oh, and Dean's in the chat. Because it's he's not going to really know what's going on about airsoft shit, but I love him anyway, and I miss throwing everyone. I miss you, Dean. Uh... You see this, you see these, this same customer behavior, basically, in other facets. So let's say you go to a restaurant. Here's how I would equate it for non-airsofters. Let's say you go to a restaurant, and the food is shitty, and not only is the food shitty, the wait staff is shitty. Or, or, let's say one is okay, but the other just sucks ass. So like, so like the food is really good, but the fucking service is horseshit. The waiter smells like their wait staff super rude. Can't wait to go back next Friday. Five stars. Bitch said, what? Are you crazy? Why? Well, you know, it's close. There are no other restaurants like it in my area. That's, that's the consumer spending habit for that problem or the consumer behavior. Bro, next time, I might be coming back down to L.A. Ooh, 
Ooh, you know what? I'm not coming back down to LA again. Fuck, I forgot. I can't come back down to LA until August. Because I don't want to bring... Because I get my daughter soon, and I can come down for some stuff in LA, for some KWS BQB stuff. I get my daughter on the 22nd, and I'm not leaving the area. I'm not bringing my kid to an airsoft field. She's just going to sit... I mean... She knew the same thing she does all the time. She's going to sit there on her phone and probably have a great time, but I'm not dragging her through that shit. Anyway. Yeah, dude. So, it fucking bothers me when fields do all this heinous, unethical, illegal shit, and you see this uproar from the fucking community online. Like, bro, kids are reposting all this shit. Like, Instagram's going fucking wild. We're not going back to this field. <laughs> And seven days have gone by. It's now Saturday morning and all you little fuckers are at that field again. Don't talk shit. Don't talk shit. Oh, but we just want to play. Ugh, we just want to play. We don't care if the manager fucking hates us or if the manager intentionally goes out of his way to charge us more money. No fucking go, bro. I don't, I don't understand that. Why do people keep going back to businesses for a bad experience? Who the fuck does that? And I don't really see that in any other aspect of society. I don't. Uh, I can't think of any time. I'm trying to think. I've personally never done that. None of my friends do that. Like, We've gone to sushi restaurants before where it was kind of like borderline. And then we kept going back to see if it would change. But if it didn't get any better, we stopped fucking going and we would drive 20 more minutes just to go to a better experience i don't know why anyone else does, doesn't do that i don't know it's fucking weird but you'll see you'll you'll hear all these narratives about uh what are the ones i've seen i haven't really seen anything like textbook extreme uh well Correction, with the exception of when that ref punched that kid in Ocala at Wayne's Paintball or whatever in Florida. Uh, I'm pretty sure kids keep going to there. I also, I want to know more information about that, because I don't actually think that was a ref. I bet that was just some stand-in dude with a vest. I don't know. That was interesting. Uh, but to be fair, what I saw online was that I legitimately don't think that the owner knew what the fuck was going on until, like, Tuesday. So I don't, I don't know. But I've never really seen an instance where a field did wrong by the community and that community outright stopped going. It, you, you don't see it. It just doesn't fucking happen. I don't really see this in tournament formats a whole lot. Uh, it's It's hard for me to believe that something is, that anything, that a field, that a shop, that a tournament format, it's hard for me to believe that something is quote unquote pro community when all they fucking do is take money from the community. I don't, I don't understand how you can do that. I don't get it. Cause even if, like you look at speed QB, the OG standard and how to create and maintain a fucking community to me is speed QB. Uh, they're doing events. So yeah, they they do have they sell products, but like that, dude. I want one of those fucking community days at my field. That shit looks so cool. But dude, Speed QB as a company gets fucking down for their guys behind the scene. The shit they help field with fields with behind the scenes that they basically do for free is fucking killer. It's 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 real cool. Okay, I will admit. I was fucking not happy with the way that that SpeedQB event we had turned out, but that was also my f my fault. Uh, so there's that. Here's the another... Th I'm just going off on rants at this point. How the fuck do players get to spend all this time talking about community and being community and further culture and all this shit, but when you guys compete on the field against each other... It's fucking, fuck you, get the fuck out. Your team's a piece of shit. You're all a bunch of fucking cheaters. That's why you're in a cheater-ass fucking team. Like, oh, this is community? You're out of your fucking skull, kid. Are you nuts? 
What fucking community treats each other like shit? Airsofters are fucking ridiculous, bro. I can't stand that shit. Uh, I'm actually trying to get Speed QB up here. Hopefully in the next couple months, uh, I just have to get with Roy and see what their schedule looks like. And, th and then we just got to talk terms and money and cut them a check, basically. Uh, but I, I want them to come back up here because I fucking love... Dude, that fucking... That L.A. trip I went on lit a fire under my ass to do fucking better up here. We're fucking behind the curb. We're just... Northern California is not on the same fucking level as what they're doing at Project N1. It's just fucking not. And I don't... I don't know where the disconnect is. I don't know. Um... I don't know if it's me as a field manager. I don't know. Yeah, so that's like the random, like the random team draw shit where you can talk shit to your own teammates. That's fucking funny. But when it's like on scrim Saturday, everyone's taking pictures. And then when they compete Sunday, these I'm trying to like get these teams to not physically fight each other. That's fucking weird. Uh, and I, I guess to an extent you could use like uh, certain family functions as an like, what are you talking about, dude? That's like Thanksgiving at my parents' house every weekend. Like, okay, I mean, that's fair, I suppose. <coughs> Yo, that's why I, hi, friend. That's why I put in that Discord a while ago, the NCS Discord, like, yo, going forward, this is how I'm going to run fucking tournaments. If you're an asshole, you're fucking gone. I have, so one... I think the reason I was so upset at the Speed QB event was how players, how shitty players got. I literally, to this day, have a ref that refuses to referee tournaments. He doesn't want anything to do with it because of how fucking horrible people were at the Speed QB event. Dude, look at how bad the fucking CSL event got. That, that was the fucking worst. The fucking worst I've ever seen kids up here was at CSL. And it was not CSL's fault. And it wasn't on my ref staff. It was the fucking players. Because ultimately, you are responsible for your own emotional stability. Like, why are you losing your shit if a ref did or did not make a call? You're a grown-ass fucking man. Suck it the fuck up, bitch. Like, what do you fucking want out of life? I don't understand. Like, who hurt you? Bubba, who hurt you? Stop it. Just, what are you doing? Come on, you're better than this. Like, bro, you've, you've got kids. Like, you're a dad. You have three kids and a beautiful wife, a big ass fat house. Like, why are you fucking barking at a teenager? I don't, this is weird. Yeah, dude, Mark's right, bro. It's fucking, part of it I think is players. Um, I've spent years trying to figure out what the fuck it was. I cannot for the life of me figure it out. I don't know if it's just that's how young American males act. I don't know. I don't fucking know. Uh, it's fucking weird. That's why I cut back on tournaments. Is because... The fucking community is just fake as fuck in so many ways. And players want to... Players want to expect one thing. And then perform in another way. Like, oh, we're all going to get together. We're going to have fun. Just no drama. Blah, blah, blah. Fuck you. Fuck you. You piece of shit. Call your fucking hit. It's off your mask. Mask. Mask your foot. Your foot. Like, <laughs> What? What? What the fuck, bro? I don't get it. I don't. So, I, yeah, I, I killed tournaments for a while. I don't want to fucking deal with it. Why? Why? I don't know why. It's Why should I have to bother with that bullshit for a while? Uh, that's why I, I don't like five-on-fives, dude. I don't. Three-on-threes are killer. Like, those money three-on-three -three tournaments I was running was the fucking best vibe we've ever had at the field. Uh, that... The Bantam, the kids tournament where it was like 17 and under, that shit was fun. Every time I try to do like a different fun format, it, here's the other thing that pisses me off. All these kids are like, oh, we, you know, we want to compete, we want to get good and blah, blah, blah. But they bitch, piss, and fucking moan anytime a tournament format comes up and goes, what do you mean I can't use a primary adapter in my high kappa? What do you mean I can't just do the same thing over and over again and expect to somehow be fucking better? Like, what the fuck, dude? I don't understand this shit anymore. It's just... <laughs> I, 
<laughs> it's fucking weird, man. The whole fucking quote unquote community vibe is 80% bullshit. Straight up. It's just for fucking, it's for social media likes, it's for Instagram. Because what kids, what kids are saying, or when, when I say kids, I really mean what players are saying in like an Instagram post is not how they're acting in real life. They're just, they're piece, they're at, they act like pieces of shit. And I don't fucking know why. So I don't fucking give it. So actually, Alex, funny you say that. I want to do uh, Springer, like a Springer event. Just like a, like single shot Springer shotguns and just kind of scatter them all over the field. But here's the problem from a field manager standpoint. I have to do what makes, for the most part, I have to do what makes money. So let's say I want to put on a three-player uh, pistol-only tournament, which I do. If I don't allow primary M4 adapters, fucking maybe, may, or bro, maybe two teams sign up and I don't make any fucking money off of it, which is fine. I mean, that's cool, but why, why am I going to devote resources to something that's not going to at least give me an even ROI? So if I have to say it's a two on two, no matter what, at a bare minimum, you need four reps, one in each corner. So that's four dudes away from my public play. Fuck, bro, that's hard. That's a hard decision to make. So in one sense, uh, so so from from a player standpoint, you could easily make the argument that I'm not, that true aim isn't pro community because they're not doing tournaments, you know, every month or every, every few months. And then my counter to that is players aren't pro community because they act like dick bags. How do you go from there? But again, I don't, if I've learned anything from the community is I can be a shitty and as salty as I want, and I can treat my players like fucking dog shit, and I can overcharge, and I can make up all these ridiculous bitch-ass rules and pull... I can just pull stupid rules out of my ass. I'm still gonna get kids coming back the next weekend. Straight up. Because no one has the balls to not play at my field over a long period of time. They just fucking don't. They don't. Let's say you're a dude in, Ro like, let's say you live in Roseville, right? Let's say you live from, let's do, like, North Highlands up to Auburn. You're fucking coming to my field no matter what. You're not going to drive to Elk Grove. You're not going to drive to Galt. You're not going to drive to fucking all the way up to Anderson. I can treat you like shit every weekend. And you're just going to keep coming back and giving me money. That's what I've learned from other managers or not directly, but like how they handle business and how players perceive them and through secondary and tertiary sources. I know, right? Is that a fucking challenge? <laughs> I don't get it, dude. It's this industry is such bullshit sometimes and players are so weird. You can give players whatever the fuck they want and then they don't want it when you give it to them. It's it's so wild, bro. Um, good case in point. Like, so we've been talking about opening the field, or excuse me, opening the shop, right? So many kids. The day you guys open, or you if you guys open Friday, I'm there. If you open Friday, I'm there. No, they weren't. No, they weren't. When I, <laughs> I know, right? I, there's no way I would ever act that way. If I put up a, like a pole, right? I pull up a poll, put up a poll on my field like, hey, if I did this on a Wednesday, would, would, would you show up? I could have 200 players hit yes. Actually, 20 of them might show up, might. Realistically, 15, because that's how shit works. When you give a player what they ask for, they no longer want it. I don't understand. It's like, they're just in it for the struggle, and then when they get the thing they struggled for, they're like, 
Oh, the struggle's over? <sighs> Fuck you, I don't want it. Like, what? what? <laughs> why? Why are you like, why is your brain like this? Who hurt you? It's just weird. I know, right? Just players always find a way to complain about something, which, again, throws this weird community dynamic, I guess, or this weird community concept for a fucking loop, is because since no one can make, no one can pull their head out of their ass, generally speaking, for the most part, on either the player side or the field side, a shit show is always going to be a shit show because no one's going to budge. You want to make a manager listen to you, get 30 kids to not go to their field. Mit minimum. Find 30 kids and don't go. If you truly, if you're true to form about being pro community, and let's say, say there's a field that's doing some shit that just treats their players like shit, and they have this event, don't fucking sign up for the event. Go around and tell other people, like, hey, dude, we're fucking boycotting this event. Here's why. Like, the manager was, was making, like, anti-Mexican remarks or whatever, or the manager's being, like, really creepy Fox News. Like, the managers will not shut up about their weird QAnon theories about Airsoft. Like, we're not going to that field because it's creepy as shit. DM kids all over the fucking place with that and get them to go, you know what? You're right. You're right. We're not going to go there this weekend we're all gonna mass it another field and we're just gonna mob this field and we're gonna form this big group and whenever this this big group gets pissed off we all like, basically unionize i'm really talking about a players union effectively hey man we're gonna hit up the union players union is pissed off at bob's airsoft field we're not fucking going to bob's airsoft field for the next two weeks who's down like you get 30, 40 kids to get down on that and go to some other field and post that shit and just like mass posts about it on your social media, on YouTube, Discord, Instagram, everywhere. And then see what happens. And then a representative hits that field up and goes, hey, we're just going to keep pulling players. Like we, in a weekend, you lost 30 players because your ref or your manager said this wild ass inappropriate thing. How do you want to handle it? Gunner, ain't nobody miss you. Stop it. I personally miss you, but that's it. Uh, you're going to get something fun out of one of those interviews, Gunner. You got called out. Wink. Not by me. I ain't fucking playing anytime soon. Are you kidding me? I have to work. Yeah, dude, fucking, for the most part, community's bullshit to me. I don't pay attention to that shit anymore. It's like, oh, we're going to do this for the community or this, that. It's fucking hard, man. I don't really believe kids when they, hey, we want to do this event for the community. Oh, fuck. Here's one of my favorite things, right? I had a kid. I think they were like juniors or seniors in high school or whatever. They wanted to charge um, 50 or 60 bucks for, it was like a, it was, I think it was a five on five TDM tournament. They wanted to host it at my speed field. They wanted to charge players. 60 bucks and they were gonna give either 30 per head to me or 20 per head to me i can't recall i'm honestly not i love you garrett i honestly can't remember but he wanted to charge 60 bucks it was just some fucking player charge wanted to charge 60 bucks a player a basic five on five tdm format offer i what did he offer? Nothing. It was no prize. Just like not even a fucking like $2 ribbon that says good job on it. And he was only going to have two refs. I told him to eat dick. I didn't say it like that. I just said, we're not interested in that format, but thank you for, you know, thank you for considering us. Now, in that scenario, you can look at it two ways. I just shot down a member of the community because I'm money hungry and I don't want, you know, anyone else to come in. I just want all this tournament money to myself because I'm not pro community, blah, blah, blah. Or the other way you can look at it is I see what you're trying to fucking do. You're trying to make money off this community and I'm not going to let that shit happen. Right? If I was a greedy, if I was a greedy ass fucking field manager, wouldn't I allow everyone and their mother just to come to the field? and make fucking make me money and I don't have to work that hard 
why would I try to have more in-house events than have outsiders come in? Why? I don't know why. And for, 30, for basically 10 bucks above the fucking field fee. Did, do people forget when I used to have fucking free speed nights? We fucking forget that shit? Let me fucking kids get out of here. Oh my god. Oh, this fucking community bullshit gives me a headache. Because it's so fake to so many people and their execution is so poorly done. You cannot. You cannot. Only take money and say you're a part of the community. Like, oh, you should let us come through. You know, we're big in the community. But like, okay, cool. What do you do for the community? Um, we take their money and then that's it. Oh, but we talk about them on our Instagram with like 200 followers. Fuck you. Get the fuck out of here. Get out of my fucking DMs, you piece of shit. What are you fucking doing? What are you, oh, it's a, uh, well, you see, it's, it's $90 a player and it's a speed format five on five. And we have these real cool trophies that are like the size of a fucking Coke can that we get for $2 from China. Get the fuck out of here, bro. <coughs> That's such fake ass plastic bullshit. Get the fuck out of here. You're fucking crazy. But again, depending on how you want to look at it, I'm not pro-community because I don't let that shit happen on my own field. I would rather have a $30 tournament control every aspect of, my, of, of that event because I know what the fuck I'm doing than, and not make that much money. I only charge 30 bucks for most of my tournaments. That's it. Uh, sometimes it'll go like 40 50 for cash tournaments where you can win fucking money. That's it, though. That's why you don't see a lot of outsiders at my... There's only a few... I'll tell you exactly who I fuck with. Speed QB, CSL, NSL, literally anything Gunner wants to do. That's really it. There's not a whole lot of other shit I want to do. I'm not interested in anything else. I'm just fucking not. I don't see the purpose behind a lot of it. Why? If you are charging more than $50 a head and you can't justify it to me, get the fuck out of my DMs. Uh, the party is actually every day. Just throwing that out there, bro. I'm trying to think. I mean, obviously, you know what the fuck I want to do. Uh, I want to do some big shit, but we're going into summer and yo, Gunner, I owe you a makeup event because King of Airsoft was not good for that's my fucking fault. I shouldn't have had you do that shit in the summer. I owe you a fucking event. You come up and do this shit whenever you want. You keep everything you make. I don't want your fucking money. If you decide you want to come back, if you want to come out of retirement, just fucking saying, bro. Uh, yeah, that's why I don't believe in a lot of this community bullshit. That's why my field will not have a lot of fucking outsiders run tournaments because I, I just think they're in here to take my kids' money. You're not going to fucking take my kids' money. Nope. Not without a damn good reason. So let's say you had like $100 a person format and you were giving away fucking like the winning, like the third place team gets a fucking high kappa and like an ace tech tracer unit. All right. I'll listen to you. I'll read the rest of your message. You come out of retirement when you want, baby. Uh, if you, I'll, I will, Gunner, if you want to come up just for fun, you can bring Aurora because I'm getting a Lexus in two weeks and I'll just make my daughter watch your kid. That's how that, that's how that works. That's how Airsoft dads unite. Like, bro, I want to come up when I have my kid. I got my kid. My kid will just watch your kid. They're both girls. Mm. Just fuck just that idea out there, bro. I'm on that dad shit, too. Manny, come on! Oh, my God. Of course you knocked someone else up. Of course you're going to have more kids, Gunner. Great. Anyway. Yeah. So I just wanted to get that off my fucking chest. Because I'm seeing a lot of fields doing some wildly illegal uneth unethical bullshit behind the scenes and in front of the scenes and kids are still like we support this field community yeah it's fucking great. like what are you out of your fucking mind they don't pay anyone like what the fuck are you doing 
Their field manager makes half of minimum wage under the table. That's not fucking for the community. Stop going to that field. No, we're not going to go to that. We're not going to stop because we just want to fucking play. Like, oh, then you're not fucking for the community. You cannot say you just want to play and you're pro-community in the same fucking sentence because they both contradict each other. I don't understand that. That's so fucking stupid to me. I understand what kids... Usually what kids are saying is they're, they're tired of the drama and the bullshit. They just want to play and have fun and enjoy the experience of Airsoft. That aspect, I understand. However, what most kids usually mean that to be is, I don't give a fuck if you're having problems. I just want to play. Oh, that ref is making half minimum wage and gets treated like shit and doesn't get any fucking breaks and has to pay for everything full price. Fuck that, I don't care, I just want to play because I'm selfish. <coughs> That's another way to look at that statement. I'm a piece of shit, right? What the fuck? Why do I take this shit so seriously? Is this why we did half a million dollars last year in a church's backyard? Because I know my shit? I'm the fucking king for a reason, bitches. I'm the fucking king for a reason. <laughs> I'm out of my mind. I haven't even started drinking yet. Oh, I'm opening the floor for questions, and then I can end this rant and send all of you lovely fuckers on to your weekend, and I can jump back on and play some fucking Red Dead Redemptions. Who's got a question, motherfucker? Oh, I should have brought beer. Fuck. <clears throat> I'm still burping up tequila. I had tequila a little while ago. Thanks, Blake. I miss you. <laughs> Hope everything's going good. Have fun being such a, an adult. Dojem? Oh, so another fun fact. Um, I don't really... I, I don't think I have to convince anyone. Just tell them it's my field, and if that's not good enough, let them stay. Let them stay. Uh... The other way I would go about things, hi, John. The other way I would go about it is, so, like, a lot of my homies, so, like, especially when I was in L.A., everyone was like, dude, I want to fucking come up. Like, yo, don't come up in the summer. It's hot as fuck. There's no one there. It's not a miserable experience, but it's hot as dog shit. The best time to play is honestly, because we're outdoors, so it's when the weather's nice. So, like, the end of September to, like, late April are the best times to play. Because there's so many fucking kids to shoot in the face. Like, I'm curious to see what's going to happen to our numbers right now. Uh, not nervous. I mean, I know we're going to start dropping in attendance, but it is what it is. Professor John in the chat. Hey. Um, what the fuck else was I going to say? Holy shit, this is an extended rant, right? I had a fucking point and I totally forgot what it was. Oh, fuck yeah. So fuck all these other businesses that don't pay their fucking people. I just promoted three of my staff members. Uh, Johnny... If anyone is familiar with my kid, Johnny, Johnny knows, Johnny is now my, my field manager, Cotton is my assistant manager, Isaiah is my head ref, none of those guys are making less than $16 an hour with W-2s, I'm just fucking throwing that out there, $16 an hour is what I pay my leads, that's what I pay my head ref, no... If you're making minimum wage, you either don't care about money uh, or you're just, you know, you're going to work your way up. And you just, you're a dude that loves, you know, you have a great attitude and all this other stuff. You don't really know what to do, so I'm going to pay a minimum wage until you can learn to fix guns or, you know, some other shit. None of my staff members make any less than $16 an hour. Just fucking throwing that out there. Unless you're new. That's it. Everyone else is fucking balling. Not balling, but bro, for Airsoft, that is fucking balling. Like, what did the head tech at AEX make in Santa Clara? I think he was at like $17 an hour. Those poor guys, bro. I feel bad for a lot of them. I feel bad for anyone that doesn't work for fucking me. Like, oh God, you make what? You make fucking 20 bucks a day under the table, but it's cash, so you're cool with that? Ugh. <laughs> Does that even cover gas one way? Shit on a shingle, bro. It's the other thing. I, you, you go, field managers, 
Pay your fucking people with W-2s. What are you doing? You wonder why I've been able to expand so quickly in such a short amount of time. Basic business practices. Fucking schmucks, bro. I can't stand that shit. I mean, maybe I'll hire. Tech at Jungle for a month and was getting only, only 15. See, that's what pisses me off. Here's how, if you're teching, to me, that's a specialty skill. So you, you shouldn't be entry level if you're fixing, if you're learning to fix, I can understand that. If you're like not even journeyman level, because even, you know, to an extent, journeymen have been formally trade. But let's say, say you know, you can, you can install an HPA, right? You can put, drop a jack in, uh, you can drop a gate tighten in with that, you know, easily, you know how to swap out cylinder heads and all this shit. That's not minimum wage because minimum wage is an entry level function. If you're getting minimum wage, what you're telling me is literally anyone can do that job like fast food or cashier or, you know, washing cars or whatever, that those aren't specialty skills. That's why I'm paying, like, all my techs, that, that are, they're also job titled, so the job title I gave them was sales associate, parentheses, uh, AEG tech, or right? like AEG maintenance technician or some shit like that. But it says it in the job, and because it says it in the job, that requires a specialty skill, which I'm willing to compensate motherfuckers for. So... What are we doing? But, yeah. Yo, Reaper's right. Just because dudes are fucking greedy. I don't, un like, you just, you wonder why fields go through staff so quickly? They don't fucking treat them well. Like, every, no one has quit for, because we treated them like shit or because we wouldn't pay them. So... Uh, Cora left because she moved in with her boyfriend at Catalina Island. Good for her, by the way. That's a step up. Uh, Caleb went on a deployment. Okay, I can't be mad at that. Everyone else has stayed with us. No one's, no one's quit my job. No one's quit my company yet. We've been open since January, last January. No one has quit. How many refs have, like, other fields gone through? I don't know. A lot? Why do they leave? Because they weren't being paid. Be fucking real. I mean... You're not... You're a contractor, Manny, so you get the shit end of a stick. Filthy contractor. <laughs> and I take care of my sponsor teams. Like, legitimately. Yo, will you fucking... Adam. Why are people coming to my store asking to pick up guns from you? Why? Why? Why is that a thing? Why? <laughs> Why? Literally had a kid like, um, is, is Adam here? Adam, what are you fucking talking about? Let me see. I don't know this phone number. Like, bro, DM his Instagram. Stop it. Oh my God. That's what a fucking ridiculous business. This is a ridiculous business fucking wild ass industry yeah i sponsor manny with haritos so that's what i need Ooh, do we still have haritos i need a costco run soon again so that's actually so my goal for the next five years is to open a field outside of our region so, like, either the Bay Area, like, we're looking at San Jose, or maybe another state. We were looking at Dallas. I'm not moving to fucking Dallas, because that's where I'm hearing Tax City's going. I don't want to compete with Sonny, just because, fucking why? I mean, I could put one on, like, if he's on the east end of Dallas, I could just go on the west end and fucking whatever's whatever. There's no one in Oregon. Dude, fuck doing business in Oregon. Did you see what that state put, um, arena through? No, dude, that guy had to change his policies. Dude, poor Terry had to change his rules. It looked like almost weekly or like every other week kind of a thing. Oh, yeah, so outdoor field, yeah, that, man, maybe. I want to do indoor. If, if we go out of the region, we have to do an indoor field. 
because that's going to be closer to people and we got to make fucking money. I wanted to put one in the Lake ja in Lake Jackson, Texas, in the Gulfport by Houston. But then I'm competing with high grounds and I got to see like how many people do I think I could realistically pull? We were looking at Nevada, Adam. We were looking at Reno. Uh, but there's no there's nothing usable that we want. So it's either too expensive or too small. We were looking at Vegas, but same thing. It's either too expensive or too small. It's fucking wild. Bro, where you been? Where you been for rolling? Come on, G. Uh, and yeah, that's it. Hopefully, I will be back to training. Should be back at Aries Tuesday. Should be back at Judo Wednesday. Uh, and then back at Aries Thursday. So hopefully, I can start training again. Dude, I'm, hand to God, there's a couple times where I almost just slept at the fucking store just because I didn't want to go home. Like, we were no shit at the store until 10, 11 o'clock at night some night, all, all week. That's just how it was. Paul, 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 you got to come by the store. It's so fucking fun. I'm going to be in the shop tomorrow. Uh, shop tomorrow opens at 9, 9 in the morning. Weekends, the, sh the store is open from 9 to 2. I'll be there at like 8, 8.30. Maybe a little earlier. I'm definitely leaving. Well, I might leave a little early because there's UFC. Paul, bro, you need to come to the shop tomorrow. It's, you know where, do you know where it's at, Paul? It's basically by Denios. Like, if you know where that Chevron is by Denios, where the fucking uh, Los Altos Taqueria is at, we're literally right next to it. I got some cool shit in the works um, yeah, I got some stuff I want to, I want to float by you, uh, and, and get you kind of your, your feelers on some things. I would, I would appreciate your opinion tomorrow. If you are so inclined to come by the store tomorrow, if not, dude, don't worry about it, bro. I'll see you. Don't worry. I'm in your backyard, basically. And shit's going to be fire. So that's pretty much that. Um... Uh, we are next to Los Altos. Cause, okay, so you know how it's Quiznos, and then for a while it was Arts Beer Cafe, or Arts Craft Beer Palace, and then like some other random fucking spot, and then Los Altos? We are in those empty fucking spots. Uh, I'm doing judo at, it's in North Highlands. The If you go on Facebook, because he doesn't have Instagram, uh, it's called the Dynamo Sport Club. It's in North Highlands, and it's hand to God above a Slavic trucking company, which is how you know it's legitimate Russian judo. Like this, dude, and he only charges me fifty bucks. I only go on Wednesdays. I might start going on weekends too. Actually, fuck, I might be able to go tomorrow. We'll see. We'll see. A lot of shit going on, um, and that's it. Paul, please come by the store at some point so we can say hi, and I can run some cool shit by you. And I am going to go inhale some of the devil's lettuce and think of more cool business shit to do because I just want to do fucking punk rock airsoft shit with my friends. Bye.